We begin the process, our irrigated area with center pivots totals approximately 216 hectares. Each time a leaf forms and droops, we count one V stage of the corn. So here the corn is in stages V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, V7, almost V8. After stage V10, it reaches the flag leaf, which precedes tasseling. Jesse sent a message saying that he won't be making videos anymore because you haven't subscribed to the Santa Fe channel. So subscribe now and he will continue recording on farms around the world. My name is Priscilla. I have a degree in agronomy and graduated about a year and a half ago here in Descalvado. I've been working on the farm for almost two years in the agriculture department. We handle all forage production, including silage, pre-dried tifton, and fresh green forage. We have four center pivots, work with both main and second crops, and plant oats during the colder season. Right now, the second crop is already planted for future silage. Our pivots operate with fertigation, with nutrients injected into the water. One Tifton pivot is 100% fertigated. Using water from the freestall washdown and milking parlor, which is collected in a holding lagoon and recirculated. Our irrigated pivot area is approximately 216 hectares, used for both main and second crops. We also farm rain-fed corn in the surrounding areas. We use hybrid seeds from Biomatrix, AgroEst, AgroSares, and Pioneer. We also plant forage oats, but not for grain. They are harvested green during heading to make pre-dried forage. Harvesting is done with a self-propelled machine and cutting height depends on corn conditions. Typically, we cut at 15 to 20 centimeters above ground. We monitor and aim for dry matter levels of 34 to 36%. One key innovation here is that we produce our own organic compost for the pivot areas rather than using synthetic planting fertilizers. The compost is made from manure-laden sand, bedding straw from heifer barns and poultry manure, with gypsum added to reduce acidity. We track corn growth by leaf stages. Each new leaf adds a new V stage, V1, V2, etc. Our corn is currently near V8, and after V10, it reaches the flag leaf and begins tasseling and pollination, marking the onset of ear formation. Our pollination process begins at V2, where we apply with Uniport, and from V4 onward, it's done entirely by drone. This reduces losses caused by Uniport tracks and improves yields. We plant both main and second crops in September, targeting optimal soil moisture. We experienced some drought, so we relied more on pivot irrigation, though at times the water reservoir wasn't sufficient. We already harvested the main crop and planted the second crop in September. Harvest usually takes place after 110 to 115 days. We evaluate the ear development as part of this decision. We assess the milk line inside the kernel to determine the harvest point. We aim for the grain to be at one-third starchy and not still milky. This year, harvest began on January 2nd and we just completed the main crop, both irrigated and rain-fed. Now we're waiting to harvest the second crop, which still needs more time. After completing the harvest, we use a ripper to break up the soil. Next, we apply potassium chloride, KCL, or other required inputs, depending on soil analysis. At V2, we also apply top dress urea, and subsequent management consists mainly of foliar spraying. During harvest, we use both farm-owned and outsourced trucks. Given the large area, we cannot afford to lose dry matter, so we operate with six trucks and up to 10 trucks for distant fields. One forage harvester fills a truck in about three minutes. At the silo, we begin with two tractors, one to compact and one to push the material up the ramp. Good material is meaningless without proper compaction. It's crucial for silo quality. Eventually, we add a third and even a fourth tractor for compaction. I oversee this area closely, conducting daily closure logs, monitoring dry matter, and performing Penn State shaker box tests. This guides our cutting decisions and identifies needed adjustments. I'm very involved in this silage management process. The Penn State shaker box test includes three upper sieves and a bottom pan. I measure one and a half cups of silage, sieve it twice, and record the results. I then report findings to my supervisor and Roberto, who decide whether to adjust the chop length. We are currently chopping at 18 millimeters, but sometimes reduced to 16 millimeters, depending on field conditions. Is the shaker box essential for you? Yes, absolutely. I use it daily and can show you later. It consists of four levels. The top level retains longer leaf material. The second and third levels are the most important xiaomis. The second level retains smaller particles and broken kernels, while the third captures even more cracked kernels. 
The bottom pan collects fine material from both the plant and the grain. We focus especially on the middle two levels, which are critical for quality and nutritional balance. We define particle size directly at the chopper based on sieve test results. We had been chopping at eight millimeters, which produced a fine chop. For corn, it's crucial to compact well to ensure proper fermentation. Any air pockets can lead to spoilage. We also use an oxygen barrier film under the plastic. Just before sealing the silo, we apply an antifungal treatment. The antifungal forms a thin layer that seals small holes or punctures in the plastic. Where air has entered, you can see a film layer, which is then removed. After that, we place the oxygen barrier and then cover with black and white plastic sheeting.